I rooted my comments on the assessment of the underlying economic fundamentals. And this is the, the support that, that will keep the peso stable over the medium term. And it's important to emphasize that point. Our inflation is under control. Yes, we have a moderate current account deficit, but that's to be expected for an emerging market economy. You know, we've been running current account surpluses for a long time. But the economy is growing fast, and we have to analyze the underlying reason why the current account has turned into a moderate deficit. And the driver for that are, are primarily capital goods, uh, imports, and other imports that support uh, economic uh, production. And this is quite consistent with a rapidly growing uh, economy. And there's plenty of uh, buffer uh, available. For example, our reserves are at more than 80 billion at this point of time almost nine times the coverage of exports of goods and services. And uh, also we have market access, so we have ready access to financing. Now it's very different from uh, the economy, how the economy was, let's say, in the 80s. Uh, there's certainly a lot of underlying strength in the economy. That's where I was coming from when I asserted that uh, we're quite confident that the peso will be stable over the medium term. Uh, none, nevertheless, Governor, the peso has seen some sudden weakness breaching 50 and 51 in the last couple of weeks. And now the question of volatility seems to be arising again. Um, from your po uh, position as the BSB Governor, do you think there are ways for us to cushion ourselves from external volatility if it does pick up? You know, the peso is market determined. It's natural for it to show volatility on a daily basis in the short term because it reflects all of the nervousness all of the uh, uh, guesses of the market. And that's part of the mechanism that protects our economy, the flexibility of the peso. But, you know, the BSP uh, is there. We are uh, looking at the situation and uh, moving uh, strategically if, the, if we believe that the volatility is excessive. But it's quite important to let the peso reflect the, uh, the underlying conditions of the economy. There's a couple of pressures we're facing on two fronts. Now, the BSP, as you, as you guys have projected, you're projecting a massive, uh, pretty sizable current account deficit by year end. And then you have these rising geopolitical tensions amid heated rhetoric between Washington and Pyongyang. Now, how is the BSP viewing these twin pressures at the moment? I think the term uh, massive is uh, probably not the right term to use. We are uh, going to probably have a current account deficit that is uh, well below 1% of GDP. That's very financeable for the economy and, as I mentioned, quite consistent with our expectations. Uh, and, and I think uh, the developments in the global markets, for example, the statements uh, from the Fed, for example, that suggests that there may be another rate hike uh, increase or rate hike. That has an impact in the short term on the market, but we don't see that to be long-lived. Uh, these are going to be temporary uh, market adjustments. But uh, again, uh, the economy, the exchange rate will revert to its underlying fundamentals. Given everything that's happened in the forex markets, both here and abroad, are you ready to intervene in the forex markets if, uh, if needs be? You know, the BSP always stands ready to manage the foreign exchange market if it is uh, turning to be disorderly. Governor, I want to move now to some of the reforms that the BSP is looking at. There's a couple of them, actually, and one of them is possibly lowering bank reserve ratios. Now, easily, the Philippines has one of the highest in the region. Can you talk to us about what goes into the BSP's consideration when figuring out the timing for adjusting these figures? Yes, that's an important medium-term objective, uh, JP. So I have to frame it that way because we also have to uh, pick our timing right on this. It's an important reform. As you pointed out, it's, uh, it makes our banking system uh, b bear a heavier burden. Uh, let's say if you benchmark around the region, so 20% is one of the highest in the world. So what, but what we need to do is to find a good exit strategy that doesn't uh, confuse uh, market signals, uh, especially now when the exchange rate seems to be uh, unusually active in the short run. So we have to pick our moment, and uh, it will come. We have three more rate decisions this year from the BSP, and the median forecast by Bloomberg is that the key rate would be at 3.25% uh, by year end, implying one rate hike. I have to ask you, are the markets reading the cues of the BSP correctly? We are very data dependent on this uh, issue, JP. So the, the next three meetings for the rest of the year will be the occasion 
for the BSP and the Monetary Board to take a look at the data. We need to understand the implication. But you know, our focus must always remain. Uh, we are an inflation targeting regime. Our monetary policy is primarily focused at keeping us on track with our 3% inflation target with a plus minus one deviation. So far, so good. We are uh, right in the middle of our inflation target. We recently upgraded our forecast for inflation in uh, 2018 and uh, 2019, so as well as 2017. And the numbers suggest that we will be hitting our target. But as I said, uh, things happen and uh, conditions change. So we will have to look at it on a meeting by meeting basis.